Good morning. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis, and it's hashtag Finally Friday. Rolling into a weekend, uh, you know, first week after spring break, a bit tough. I'll say it's a bit rough. Uh, my co-host this morning, Randy Ramsey of Southwest Alternate Media Project, also here at HCC as well, by the way. Randy, did you have a good spring break? Had a great spring break. Headed up to Banff in Canada with the kids. Yeah, Enjoyed the cold. Uh, yeah, I was so on the. So exciting. Of the of the spectrum. You I went was, to Mexico, right? Mexico, yeah. Soaking up the sun. The sun, no, no cold. Just the sun will be here soon enough. I, yeah, well, it was very similar weather to to here in Houston, but uh, but yeah, it was very nice. Yeah, very nice to get away and have a little bit of break and had an extra three days thanks to uh, a certain airline who I won't name on this program right now. Let's really because I them, I rode WestJet and I got here on time and WestJet yeah. WestJet is like the Greyhound bus of Canada but you know it was cheap and it did the trick. Let's just put it this way: the, their name is either Ghost or Spirit, one of the two. So, but I oh, will well, say, that's the problem. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, hey, though, Randy, it's Film Friday. You got a guest coming up. I want to let everyone know that uh, we appreciate you being here live with us every morning at ten at ten a.m. weekdays when HCC is in session. But they can also catch us in social media anytime and on HCC TV as well. That's right. We're on Twitter, LinkedIn, and HCC TV at noon, 5, and 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. So, you know, you can't catch us live. There's there's no excuse not to watch None. The watch the show. Okay, your guest is coming up. But first, I want to say hi to uh, our second guest, Sandra Shimba. She is the assistant student, assistant student support for HCC Central. Sandra, good morning. Good morning, Todd. Good to have you with us on the show. I know we're going to be talking about a very important subject, food insecurity, and what HCC is doing to talk or or to uh, resolve that. Um, stick around. We're going to be with you in about 10 minutes, all right? Awesome. All right. Thank you. Okay, Randy, I think you know this next guest, right? Because uh, you guys may each other a little bit. All right. I'll let you take it away. A little bit. Jenny Waldo, HCC Filmmaking Program Coordinator, Independent Filmmaker, and Novelist, which actually is something I didn't know until recently, uh, is here with us this morning. Welcome back to the show, Jenny. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you seem so enthused. No, it's funny. The Novelist thing um, it is just such a funny thing because it, the novel that I uh, kind of self-published was one of those kind of creative identity crisis moments that I had when my kids were young and, you know, was struggling to kind of do film stuff because, you know, hours are long and late and weird. And, you know, I was the primary caretaker of young kids. And so, uh, so I was like, well, I can write, you know, and, uh, and my brother had told me about NaNoWriMo, the National Novel Writing Month Challenge, which happens in November. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of like, well, I'll just do that. You know, I was just so desperate for some kind of creative output. And so I I wrote this, uh, you know, ridiculously long uh, novel. It, it's a young adult kind of paranormal mind reading kind of love story. And uh, and then basically, you know, shelved it as I went back to film and, you know, all that stuff. So after about, I don't know, 12 years, I workshopped it in a couple of writing groups but finally i was like i just need to get it out and call it done and just put it out there so i kind of quietly self-published it and the second half i split it into two books because it's very long so I'm, I'm actually still working on the second half which needs to come out but uh but yeah it's it's uh it's kind of a funny aside. <laughs> well, I mean, those staying kids, you know, you give birth to them and then they expect you to like feed them and play with them and pay attention to them and stuff. And they just take up so much time. You know, as a mom, I get it. I was living in the Middle East. So my weird thing was to do bizarre cultural theater. But, you know, <laughs> because we were all expat wives, we could do it in two hour increments while the kids were at school. Right. Um, so I think that's funny. I hadn't heard the novelist thing, so that was new. But you've been at HCC for a while. So in addition to being a novelist, before before you did that before you started here, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, well yeah. Did did no acid test, you did that before you started at HCC or while you were here? No. So well, I've been adjuncting uh I thought it was 10 years, but I think 
it's actually nine years. No, I think it's 10 years now. I think I started in 2013. Um, so I started adjuncting about 10 years ago when we were still at the Spring Branch campus with the film program. And I started off in the documentary program, or I kind of built a documentary class because they didn't offer anything. So it was an elective. And uh, and then kind of over time added, you know, TV field and other projects and then uh, or classes. And when there was an opening for a full time, I applied. So I've been full time. I think about I think this is my seventh year being full time. And I think it was about when I was still adjuncting when I did the short film for Acid Test and I was full time. Uh, Cause that's, that was kind of part of the bringing students on board was that I needed to, you know, teach a summer section uh, for my contract and uh, was like, well, let's bring students on board to acid test the feature. Well, films. and acid test has done really well. Um, yeah. Didn't it just recently compete against Richard Linklater's? Yeah, so we were uh, up against uh, a Richard Linklater film, Apollo Ten and a Half, uh, the documentary about Texas wildlife narrated by Matthew McConaughey, a documentary about Nolan Ryan, and another Houston uh, independent film called Conception. And uh, for the Texas Independent Film Award that's uh, given out annually by the Houston uh, Film Critics Society. So that was that was an honor. I mean, I think it was the biggest. I, I literally cried when I saw the nomination. And then I and then I quickly realized that I had very little chance of actually winning because of the competition we were up against. But I, I just feel really proud of what we were able to do. I, I mean, it is. It is a small film, but I think we did a lot with it. Um, it's uh, it certainly helped. I, I think it's certainly helping with this next project with Martha's Mustang, with the fact that, you know, I have a project that you can all watch on, you know, Tubi and Amazon Prime and, and uh, you know, iTunes and things like that. Um, so it's having, had a great run, Acid yeah, Test, but it has... Great- it's laid the path work for Martha's Martha's Mustang, which is your next project. Yeah. So can you share a little bit about that? Because I know you workshopped it as part of the Houston Cinema Arts Society Festival. Yes. So where um, Martha's Mustang is is based on a true story out of Baytown in the 90s about a woman who owned an auto body shop down there and had to sue City Hall for the right to use this kind of hot pink Mustang uh, planted with wildflowers that was part of her shop sign and so this it's you know a woman in a man's world of auto body uh repair she's you know david and goliath story fighting against you know city hall and small town politics kind of thing and uh you know martha is martha is a hoot she's a great character uh, you know she's still alive and and is involved in this project. And so this project just has a lot of broad appeal, which has been obviously really wonderful. The script, I think I had mentioned when I was on this show a little while ago, got a a nickel quarter finalist, which is, you know, one of the top screenwriting competitions. And then we got this Houston Arts Alliance grant to do the table read, uh, which is basically a, a live script reading uh, where we workshopped the script and got feedback from the audience, uh, which took part as uh, on uh, during the Cinema Arts Festival here. And that was so critical to getting to this next version of it, which I'm really happy with. And uh, we were part of a producing uh, lab that's out of uh, Stowe, Vermont, with the Stowe Story Labs there. Uh, we were just a semifinalist for a film fatale fellowship for their narrative lab, also at the Stowe Story Labs. And I'm also taking part uh, in this intentional filmmaking class or course, which kind of workshops the pitch materials for it. So the goal is to take this year to develop it and to see what kind of money and talent, you know, actors we can attach to the project and see mm-hmm. if we can make something you know, bigger than than certainly what we did with Acid Test. Um, at the same time, just having been in this industry for a while and and seeing friends, you know, friends like Michelle Mower and other friends that we have 
uh, go through the kind of industry, the Hollywood uh, razzle dazzle uh, dream is that, you know, when you're not hooked into the system, it takes a really long time to get these projects off the ground. And oftentimes things will come together and then fall apart and then come together and fall apart. And I don't really want to take 10 years to get this project off the ground because I know having done acid test that we can do it, that we've got great talent here and the table read was a great example of it. And so, so, you know, it's, it's an interesting, it's, you know, certainly a new experience for me. So, but I'm excited. Well, it is, it's really exciting. Now, let me ask you really quickly. I know you've had students on your projects before, whatever incarnation this takes, will you include students? Absolutely. All the time. Uh, We had students helping out for the table read. And certainly in my classes, I'm always incorporating the next thing that I've experienced as part of a case study that they can kind of learn from. And, you know, I remember we were doing kind of a pitch session in one of my classes at the end of last semester. And I had just gone through pitching Martha's Mustang as part of the producing lab. And I had completely bombed the pitch. Like I just, when it came to be my turn, I was like, I just totally froze and garbled it. And people were asking me questions that I thought were obvious. And I was like, did I not say that? You know, (laughs) it was so terrible. And so I'm always very transparent about that with my students Mm -hmm. because I think that's, critical and especially in a world with social media it, you know we're always kind of getting the polished version of oh i'm so successful kind of thing and it's it's a lot of hard work and embarrassing failures and rejection and so you know i try and bring that transparency to my students and at the same time still juggling things like kids and you know and life and work and paying bills and inflation <laughs> Yeah, and all that stuff. So, well, I am so excited for the trajectory that this project is on, and what it's going to do for HCC and for you and for Houston Film. So, keep us posted, and I can't wait to hear more. And as I said off the air, I'm saying it on the air. I'm in. So, you know, I'll PA. I'm a hell of a coffee order or whatever you need. I definitely will take take you up on it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you both. Uh, We're going to uh, move on to another subject, very more serious subject along the lines of food insecurity uh, amongst our students and what HCC is doing to help that. Sandra Shimba is assistant student support for HCC Central College. Good to see you, Sandra. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Todd. Hi, everyone. So let's begin with the Eagle Market and how it started and where exactly are the locations? Uh, okay, so we're located in uh, the building Dr. William Harmon at Central Campus in room 215. Uh, the market started in 2018. Uh, it was an, an initiative of uh, Dr. Siddiqui, the president of Central, along with Dean of Student Success, Dr. Um, Stacy Welcome. They noticed that there were some students that were facing uh, food insecurities that were lacking a few basic needs. And they came up with this initiative, and we were the first um, pantry um, district-wide that became kind of like a, a helping hands. Help, uh, we were helping students with, along with the helping hands. And the students, how does it work? They, they're allowed to go in there. They can pick up items just like you're shopping in a grocery store. They show their student ID. And is it is as simple as that? Or do they have to sign up ahead of time? How exactly does it work? Right. So basically, it's open up for students, faculty and staff. The students have to be enrolled in the current semester. When they walk in, we just make sure that, you know, they're eligible, they're currently enrolled. And then they just pick up a basket, shop around as in a grocery store. And we just make sure um, if they want to, they can also grab a grab and go bag because we have those too. And are the, the the food itself and all the items inside there, is it coming from the Houston Food Bank? Do you have partnerships? Where exactly does it is sourced from? So we have two partners right now. Um, we're working with the Helping Hands. Um, they provide us with things like house items, you know, um, it could be Clorox. They provide things like that. The food, uh, the Houston Food Banks provide provides us mostly with like 
goods, uh, groceries. That's what they bring us. They bring most to us. And what type of items would one find there? You mentioned Clorox and stuff like that. Are you going to find bread? Can you find sandwich meat? Can you find stuff that you can make dinner for the family? What are some of the items that you might have there? Um, so we have things like we, it range from Clorox, Clorox wipes to bread. Um, we also we're trying to get to a vegan diet to um, kind of build up an international shop because we also have apart from the Houston Food Bank and the Helping Hands, we also have um, other donors like staff, faculty, and students. Um, right. Some of the camp, some of the campus groups do um, drives during campus events. Um, and so they bring in a lot of those things into. And what are the rules of the market? Uh, can the students come by anytime, twice a month? How does that work? So basically when they come in, we give them a card. They sign up for the program. We give them a card. The program is called Food for Change. Um, and so we give them an ID card. And then once they shop around, um, they can get up to 60 pounds of food twice a month. And okay. that card is it can be used anywhere on any campus or at any Houston Food Bank uh, pantry. And what hours are you guys open? Uh, so we're open Monday and Tuesday from um, 9.30 to 4.30, uh, Wednesday and Thursday from 10 to 5.30, and then on Friday we're back to 9 to 4.30. And when, what is it, or is there a lot of traffic going through there? Or, I mean, is it more than you would think when you first started uh, with the market? Right. Um, so I started in January of 2023 20, um, and up to now we've serviced up to 200 students. Um, so we get January around, this year, right? Is that yes. What you're wow. Yes. And so uh, we service around 20 students every week. So the traffic is 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 because we also oversee South Campus. So the traffic is kind of heavy. And do you have uh, any upcoming events involving the Eagle Market as well? Yes, we have two coming events. Um, one is this Tuesday at South Campus. We're going to be bringing in a trailer, um, and then the students can just come up, uh, sign up for the program, or show us their ID, and then they can pick up up to sixty pounds of food. The next uh, event is on April 4th at Central Campus. We're bringing in a market trailer and the students can also sign up and go in the trailer and grab whatever they need. How do you guys market this as far as getting the word out there? What, what have you found to be the best way? Is it word of mouth or do you ask the faculty to, and adjuncts to let students know? How does that work? So I do kind of a combination of like everything you've mentioned. Um, we do do word to mouth. Whenever we have these events, we uh, put out flyers. Um, we do a lot of tabling. Uh, we go to the different campuses like Central and South Campus. Uh, we do some tabling and we also ask the student, uh, the faculty to kind of talk to their students about it. And you said you started working for the college in January of 2023. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Because I'm, I'm wondering, I know if this was started prior to the pandemic, but I remember during the pandemic, one of the things that, that sh shocked me the most, I guess, you would, of course, you, you saw lots of video of people standing in line to get the COVID test and all that. But realistically, the lines of cars to just get groceries, because so many people were out of work at the time, was phenomenal. I mean, you would have helicopters that would be flying over to get video of these lines of cars. I guess what I'm getting at is, do you think since the pandemic, students are more open to accept this help than you would think before the pandemic? Because we're living in different times now. That's correct. Um, because more when I started, you they were there was that still that little stigma, stigma where right. they'd be shy. But now they're coming in and they're accepting that. Hey, I need help. Um, can you help me? So yes, that is correct. That that stigma is going away. And, you know, after talking with people who have represented the Eagle market over the past few years, because we've covered this extensively, um, it, it seems like the students are, like you said, they're more accepting to it. And they're they're Like you said, there's not really a stigma to it anymore. You know? um, and it's hard. I would imagine, you know, it's not like you're missing things in your cabinet, but if you've got gas prices going up, let's say your rent's going up because that happens every time you renew the lease. Yeah. Yeah. That extra money is going towards that, and mm -hmm. you may need a little help, you know, or maybe yeah. you can't light bill, 
because that electricity, you know, so I mean, it's juggling around because your budget's still limited. So right. something would, I imagine students would be more open to it because of that as well. Yes, yes, definitely. And and since they know that, you know, when they walk in, they could grab toiletries, yeah. groceries. So yeah, that's definitely right. You guys do some great work, Sandra, and uh, I know since y'all have started, because I believe wasn't HCC Central the first Eagle Market at HCC? I know they're expanding. I think Southeast has one, and yes. they're expanding across the district, but yes. uh, you just do some great work out there. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Sandra Shimba. She's Assistant Student Support for HCC Central. We'll have all the information on the Eagle Market in our social media post after the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks, All right. Sandra. So, um, I, you know, I'm going to ask you this because you're an adjunct and, and yeah. you, you, do you hear this talk from students that they, they're, you know, prices are going up inflation. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Gas prices, you know, is going up electricity. Everything's going up food prices, but nobody's getting paid more. That's the big catch in all these cases. And that's got to make students worry because it's hard to learn when you're worried about paying your bills and feeding your family. Well, it, and it's funny because the the overall um, rate of pay is going up in general, but you have to switch jobs. Yeah, and a lot right, of our right. students, unlike students at University of Houston or Rice or something, our students work. And so lots of them have families. We have lots of non-traditional students. So while they're at school, they also don't want to risk switching jobs. And then how long yeah. will that job last? Yes, I might get more pay for six months, but... I don't know. It's a tough. We had the truck out at, at the A Leaf campus, and it was doing a brisk business. So I'm very impressed with the programs that HCC has for its students, especially. And some of our students live in food deserts, so there's not a lot on offer in there where they live. So right. it's great that we have this and we have access to it, and that we're working with it. But it's funny you mentioned the lines because I lived not far from a food pantry, and during the pandemic, I mean, people were waiting three hours in their car to get yeah. in. Yeah, I remember seeing those lines. They were very, uh, uh, something that's always ingrained in my memory. You know, we never want to go through a time like that again. No. Okay, we've got some announcements. Uh, it is Friday, by the way, folks. If you haven't checked your calendar and you're living under a rock, today is Friday. Tomorrow's Saturday and we'll be back on Monday, but we won't talk about that. Anyway, no. our talk tonight, um, Catherine Fields. you know Catherine Fields? I don't know her personally, but I know her work, and I'm you know, so excited work. to see the work that she is displaying, which is from her sabbatical in Greece, using the techniques from her residency and her travels through Athens and Delphi and Crete. Super exciting. It's on exhibition now through April 6th at HCC Fine Arts Central Gallery. It's free, and tonight from 6 to 8, there is an artist talk, so I'm so excited to see what she has to say. Yeah, yeah, she's a great lady. She's been on the show several times. We had her plug in from Greece. She did live on location from Greece. That was really cool. So uh, check out her exhibition and the artist talk tonight. We'll have the information in the post after the show. Mm -hmm. Eagle Market on the Road, as we talked about, South Campus events coming up noon to 3 p.m. Tuesday, March 28th. You heard all about it. Check it out. HCC South Campus. If you would like to register for food or items you may need, it's very easy. You go online, you register, then you show up and pick it up. We'll have the post in our uh, show, all the information that you can get there. And March Madness. Woohoo! Little team from town. You may be familiar with them. They are number <laughs> one in the nation. We're talking Houston Cougars. Yeah, okay. That's going on, but we're celebrating it here at HCC. Uh, there's an all-star game as well. Yes, yeah, so HCC Central Wellness Center has launched a fun lineup of all kinds of March Madness events. So check them out and register to participate. There's an all-star game. Uh, check that out 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Wednesday, March 29th. And for more details, you can check our posts after the show. But March Madness is here. We just wrapped up the rodeo. So yeah. much to do. There's a lot going on in the city. There's a right? lot going on in this city. And then, oh, by the way, opening day for the Astros, I believe, is like Wednesday. Yeah. There's just a ton in the next two months. And then there's, there's concerts for the final four coming up. If if you work downtown, like some of us do, you know, it's it's going to be a little challenging. But I like where HCC's district offices are located because we're kind of in the fringes of downtown, like, but we're not near all the madness. You know what I mean? So I used kind to of, work down there on Fannin. Yeah. Well, yeah. So we're we're kind of in the fringes of that. I uh, want to skip down real quickly because we want to talk about summer registration. I know. That, um, so summer classes fill up fast, don't they? 
They do. And I'm teaching a summer class. It's nice because it's the abbreviated schedule. So the five week. Yeah. We have five ways to learn in the summer, just like every other time online, online on a schedule, hybrid, in person, and a hybrid lab. That's what our my studio course that I'm teaching this summer is. So I'm excited about that. And yeah, and, and hcs.edu. Yep. Hccs.edu slash apply. Go to the oh, just okay. go to the home page. We'll okay. send you there. It's real easy to find. We'll get you there. Hey, you know, um, you're you work out at the A Leaf campus. Are you mm-hmm. familiar with Anchos Cunningham, the community outreach coordinator out there? Um, yeah, we've met. You met? Okay. He, he's in a Prince tribute band. Wow, yeah, that I didn't ball. know. Yeah, well, he's going to be on the show Monday. He's our Music Monday guest. He's also one of the co-hosts, the reoccurring co-hosts of Up to the Minute. And he's got a new single he's putting out. So uh, we'll hear from him on Monday. And later in the week, Dr. Zachary Hodges will be joining us. He's the president of Northwest College. You may have met him as well. No, I never meet anybody fancy or important. That's We leave that to Utah. Wait. Yeah, they keep them away from you. All right. Yeah, He'll do. be talking about the National League of Innovation Award, all that and more. That's coming up next week. All right. Are you ready for the weekend? I am. Rugby tournament this weekend. It, it's Saturday. It must be rugby. That's our life out here. Be rugby. Well, the enjoy kids. that. Have a good weekend. Relax a bit. And we'll be back Monday morning live at 10 a.m. for Up to the Minute. Mm-hmm.